Two digital imaging experts who represent both sides of this controversy. Jim Delatoso, the president of Village Labs in Tempe, Arizona, and Cal Korf, president of Total Research in San Jose, California, have both analyzed the Meyer photos and footage. Their conclusions could not be more different. When I first saw the Meyer photographs, I thought it was a product of a special effects team. The Meyer photographs were beautiful. The ships were totally in focus, up close, and I was amazed. I'd never seen anything like that before. The computer shows under color edge enhancement processing this supportive line above the image here, and you can see a second one above this other object here. And in five other photos that we have examined from the sequence for a total of, of six separate pictures, we have found supportive structures. The entire focus of what's going on with extraterrestrials lives in the Meyer case. Some of it looks suspicious. Some of it looks like it couldn't possibly be real. Some of it is real. Jim Delatoso is an individual who is not qualified professionally or personally to render the verdicts, if you will, that he does on various UFO photographs. We have caught Delatoso lying repeatedly about his background, and Jim Delatoso's conclusions can never be replicated by anybody else except Jim Delatoso. Disturbs me when he claims that I'm involved with a hoax, perpetrating a fraud, that we don't know what we're doing, that I'm getting rich off of it, because that's not what's true, and that's not what I'm about. So when I read these things, I don't like it. Joining us in studio are Jim Delatoso and Cal Korf. Jim's among the staunchest supporters of the Meyer evidence. Now Cal Korf feels quite differently. Cal believes that the Meyer footage is simply not credible. Cal, why do you feel that way? Uh, well, I've been to Switzerland, unlike Mr. Delatoso, and I've examined the evidence firsthand. When you go to the actual locations where the images were taken, it is not possible for them to be framed or filmed the way that Billy Meyer claims. And anyone can go there and independently check that themselves. Now, Jim, you've come up with some very different conclusions. Yes. Well, I don't agree with the, the fact that they can't be framed that way. Uh, what we've done is put together a team of experts going back over 15 years to examine the photographs, the hard evidence, and come up with the opinion based on scientific examination that these are real pictures. Okay, let me tell you what we've done. We've compiled a reel of some of Billy Meyer's most convincing evidence, starting with photographs taken in the mid-70s of hovering UFOs. Now, Jim, what do you find so convincing about these pictures? Well, convincing is one thing, but that happens after examining the pictures. We never say, this is a UFO, or this is a flying saucer. We say, this is a large object, or this is a small object, and we find no evidence of a hoax. Well, for those who have never seen this before, or are not familiar with the whole Billy Meyer story, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at pictures that Billy Meyer took. Uh, we have four here out of a series of hundreds that he has taken. And uh, this is a picture of a ship known as the beam ship that could be just in front of or just behind the tree. Cal, you believe this is a model. Why? Well, as you can see, the branches of the tree do not go in front of the object, so it indicates that this so-called UFO is in front of the tree and not behind it. Now, I would be the first to admit that if the branches of the tree uh, were in front of the object, this would be a very large craft indeed, but it's not. The way you fake a photo like this is you simply have a model in front of a tree and you shoot into the sun. And a lot of Meyer's photos are conveniently shot towards the sun to help obscure any sort of supportive structure or device at the very top of them. Now, faking a still photograph is one thing, but Cal, how do you explain this moving footage? Well, the first problem is that I find Erica's. it very strange in this movie that the camera never moves. Now, what are the odds of positioning your camera and having a UFO fly about? Why isn't Meyer following the object? The reason he isn't following the object is because he's busy moving the model around. Secondly, this tree is the same tree 
that appears in the Fuchsbull sequence that later conveniently disappeared. The owners of this house back here, which is a Japanese family, have testified that there's never been a tree at this location. We were at these locations, and no one in the area said that they ever saw a tree there. I even saw photos and family albums of the Swiss families who live there taken of their kids over the years, and they show no tree there. Are you saying that someone took a tree and placed it in that position? It's a technique called forced perspective. Hollywood has been using it for nearly a hundred years. I'm not the only one to come up with this conclusion. Cal, hold on for a second. Jim, you had a point to make? He's claiming the use of forced perspective in trick photography, and that is not the case. This is not scientific. This is an attempt to prove that the case is wrong in order to sell a book. This is wrong in UFO investigations, that a group of people who scientifically go out to analyze and to test things can be just set aside because one person claims that there is a they, that there is a group, and that they are using testing procedures that have all the right words but it is not scientific, and he knows it. That's not true. Let me tell you what my position is, because I'm the only one who can state it. I'm a UFO researcher, first and fo foremost. I'm after the truth. I don't care what that truth is. When I study a UFO case, I go in there How without... How many other cases have you studied? Thousands, Jim. Which are they? You have not published one thing, I've had not over one 90 thing articles on other published. UFO cases. That is not true. I can send you, I have tons of newspaper clippings over the year. The producers have those here. I just don't understand. What do you think the motivation would be for someone like a Billy Meyer to, to create such an elaborate hoax as you say it I, is? Why? I do not address motivation in any of my work because there's no way to scientifically test for it. All I do is say, of all the evidence they offer, this is how it seems to stand up. This is how it seems not to stand up. Why Billy Meyer does what he does? I don't know. I can't speak for him. Only he can. Looks like we're at the beginning of uh, many more shows about this subject. Thank you both for being with us. You're welcome.